What's up, everybody? This is Skillsman. And Ironmonger. And this is Iron Skills. Today we're trying something new. It's sort of an experiment. We discussed more ways that we could provide content that did not pull us away from the God Guides, which we considered to be the primary purpose of this channel. The problem is, the Tumblr post took more work than we anticipated, since they aren't very interesting without images. We thought about making videos instead, but one God Guide takes a lot of time, especially for our, uh, tiny team. After contemplating the situation, Skills actually came up with a creative alternative. We should try making podcasts. We do not plan to change the screen from the Iron Skills logo you see now, so we encourage you to continue listening while you engage in other activities. You could check on social media, work on some art, or whatever you want to do. We're hoping to keep these short though, like five to seven minutes. One last piece of information to give is that we plan for these podcasts to be discussions, not guides. If we achieve our goal, you may have something new to think about, and discussion should occur in the comment section. With all that said, let us begin with our topic, Arena. Arena is a really fun mode. If you know me, you know that I love the intense action of a team fight, and Arena is all about team fighting. The stage is large and open, and you get golden experience a lot faster. I too enjoy Arena from time to time. As every match truly starts in the lobby, I believe we should begin our discussion there. Yeah, I noticed that arena lobbies are much more quiet than conquest lobbies. If I had to wager a theory, I believe this is due to your favorite aspect of arena, team fighting from the beginning to end. Without a need to claim a role, players generally know that a team only needs two damage-focused physical gods, two damage-focused magical gods, and one tank to play effectively. That's probably got something to do with it. It might also have to do with players using arena as a training mode for combat. It's a great mode to play when you want to get better at landing abilities or basic attacks. Without specific roles established for the game mode, players might decide to go with the god that they want to practice most. Nothing wrong with that in my book. I, for one, believe that you might see more competitive arena matches if the community were to agree on a deeper meta for the arena teams. As a quick example, imagine if there was a role titled Pusher, whose job was to focus on minions more than fighting gods. They would be in charge of both killing enemy minions and keeping the enemy away from yours. I agree that more communication in the lobby would be good, but I don't think Arena needs that kind of strict structure. I think most teams have a player that figures out that the minions need to be taken care of and no one's killing them. That was merely an example, but I believe you understand what I was attempting to communicate. Yeah, I think so. You think that one way to get people talking in the lobby is to have everyone agree on a list of roles the same way everyone does in Conquest. That would work, but I think getting everyone to switch mindsets would be difficult, and I don't think the idea would last very long. Perhaps. Continuing with our discussion, what else have you noticed in Arena that we might talk about? Hmm. Let me think. Well, there is a problem with communication, as far as I've noticed. It's not bad communication, mind you. It's more of a lack thereof. Yeah, it'd be annoying if every single time a player had to retreat, they'd use the falling back voice command. But there are times when people should be using it, but don't. I've been in a few fights where I thought I had backup, but my allies had actually backed up. See what I did there? Yes, I believe we all saw what you did there. Sorry for the bad joke. Anyways, to be fair, most of these cases could have been resolved if I had just glanced at the minimap or looked behind me for a second but in the heat of battle, it can be really easy to forget. A friendly warning that you're too weak to continue fighting could be very useful. I can understand. No one is obligated to tell you, but those who do tend to get better results. One event I have seen multiple times goes as follows. You have a balanced team with a guardian or warrior designated as the tank. The damage dealers either stay back because they know they can die in an instant if caught in a poor position, or attack because they do not like the slow pace set so far. From my experience, if the team wishes to become more coordinated with or without voice commands, assuming that the tank is the leader more often than not gets good results. I've noticed that too. The tank is usually someone with a lot of crowd control, so if I wait for them to do their job, I'll often have easy prey for a second or two. If I get help from another ally, we can often kill a squishy enemy in no time flat. This does not mean that the tank can do whatever they please. Once in a while, I will have a guardian on my team that is very aggressive at all times, even when multiple allies are back at our base healing or buying items. As much as I enjoy playing as the support, I have to admit that a tank with no backup is... how should I put it? Deader than a doorknob? 
I was thinking something more along the lines of a easy target to smite. But yes, your analogy works as well. We might want to wrap this up soon. This is our first podcast, so we might be going longer than expected. Why don't we summarize what we said just to be safe? I took notes. Of course you would. Anyways, I pointed out that arena lobbies are more quiet than conquest lobbies. I think this is because arena is such a good mode for practicing that players tend to have a handful of gods they plan to pick from. I've got no problem with it, since practice is important. I propose that a meta be formed so that even arena teams have structure beyond two physical gods, two magical gods, and a tank. But getting the community to agree on the roles, and having everyone agree to use them, would be very difficult and most likely unimportant in the end. The last thing I mentioned was communication mid-match. Using voice commands is completely optional, but I like it when allies give friendly warnings when I'm otherwise too distracted to notice. I ended our discussion with my thoughts on team unification. I find that letting the tank be in charge leads to better teamwork and nonverbal communication. Let us know your thoughts, and if you agree or disagree with anything we said, we'd be happy to have a friendly debate with you in the comments section. We would also enjoy hearing if you would prefer these podcasts to be more instructional. For example, if we talked about items, a discussion-based podcast would debate mid-match build adjusting, while an instruction-based podcast would be more about narrowing down items based on your situation. We hope that you enjoy this little experiment and have a great day.